The best fruit for gut health. How high polyphenol, high fiber fruit create a healthy gut. In today's video, we're going to cover the bases on why fruit is healthy for our gut. We'll begin by discussing why in particular fruit has beneficial effects on the gut via its fiber, polyphenol, and sorbitol content. How fruit improves gut health, it uh, impacts many different things. It acts as a prebiotic, uh, increases our detox pathways, it can function as an antimicrobial, and more. Polyphenols and their relationship to the gut environment, particularly around leaky gut how polyphenols promote a healthy gut, and we'll finish off by discussing the best fruit for gut health based on their polyphenol content, and to also discuss some evidence that shows how particular fruits can improve our gut health. There are many ways through which fruit is good for our gut. Uh, they contain a high polyphenol content. Polyphenols are the kind of colorful pigments that give fruit their color. Uh, these polyphenols have a number of effects both on our gut in making it a healthy uh, environment as well as regulating the microbiome uh, by changing metabolic functions, by creating different metabolites, and by acting as an antimicrobial to pathogens. Additionally, fruit are also high in soluble fiber, which can have a prebiotic effect, lead to the production of uh, these things called short chain fatty acids, which uh, kind of tamp down inflammation and prevent leaky gut. Seeds that are found in fruit are actually kind of like a time released capsule, which can kind of bring these prebiotics into our gut environment. We don't break them down uh, fully. So between the uh, nutrient content as well as kind of the shell that is covering the seed, we get these kind of uh, delivered time release packages to our colon. Sorbitol, a sugar alcohol, is also commonly found in fruit and it can play a role in making us pass easier stools. And all of these things have prebiotic effects, but they work in different ways. For example, um, fiber acts as kind of a, a specific fuel in many ways to generate healthy metabolites through these prebiotic effects. But polyphenols, in addition to acting as prebiotics themselves, can actually upregulate pathways that create other um, metabolites from different prebiotics. For example, uh, polyphenols can actually cause bacteria that make short chain fatty acids from fiber can actually increase their ability to do so, as well as other factors regulating how bacteria behave in our gut. Let's begin by discussing how the polyphenol content of fruit improves our gut health. Well, first off, as we mentioned, polyphenols do have prebiotic effects on beneficial bacteria. It can help promote healthy metabolites such as short chain fatty acids. It can create cross feeding metabolites, which bring in more beneficial microbes. And it also kind of acts to suppress some of the metabolic functions of unhealthy bacteria. Uh, the reasoning behind polyphenols kind of being effective at this is that polyphenols are sort of a plant defense uh, molecule. When plants are stressed, they create more of these polyphenols. Polyphenols give plants their bright, robust colors. So when a, a plant is being stressed, whether it be from a pest or environmental conditions, this kind of upregulates these pathways to make the plants healthier and to increase their polyphenol content. Additionally, polyphenols act as antimicrobials. Um, as mentioned, they're effectively stress response, um, stress response genes that create these, um, these polyphenols that make the plant stronger to resist pests. But when we are exposed to them by eating them, they upregulate our detoxification pathways. They're known as a xenobiotic, which is something that's foreign to the body. Now, that means we kind of perceive them as, you know, a toxin that we need to get rid of, but their overall effect is beneficial. They upregulate upregulate these detoxification pathways in a way that actually helps us detoxify other things as well. And as I mentioned, they act as an antimicrobial for the plant. So when they get into our gut, they can help resist um, pathogenic bacteria through a number of different me mechanisms that we'll discuss in a moment. And uh, these, plant, um, these plant xenobiotics are also kind of communication molecules. So what happens is when we are exposed to these polyphenols, they enter our intestinal cells. Our intestinal cells 
biotransform them. That's what a detoxification pathway effectively is. It's changing the molecule, spitting it back into the gut. Then when it gets into the colon, it can interact with bacteria there. They can spit it back into the intestinal cells. So they're effectively using um, these polyphenols as communication molecules between the microbes in our gut and the cells of our intestinal wall. So this helps provide a bunch of beneficial things, decreases inflammation, prevents leaky gut, things of that nature. And, and as said, um, even though these are kind of uh, being observed as foreign to our body, they have an overall beneficial effect on our detoxification pathways, which increases our health and improves gut health overall. In addition, fruit also contains fiber and sorbitol. Both of these things have a general uh, beneficial effect on our stool. It increases stool weight and uh, soluble fiber in addition to sorbitol will increase stool water, which makes stools easier to pass. Um, this can help relieve constipation uh, and just make it overall easier uh, for you to go. So for example, you may have heard of prunes or raisins being able to kind of improve stool weight or make it easier to pass stool, preventing constipation. That is due to their sorbitol content. It kind of uh, just like soluble fiber, it acts like a sponge pulls water into the intestine and makes your stool easier to pass. Fiber gets fermented into short-chain fatty acids. Uh, these short-chain fatty acids can fuel our gut wall, uh, specifically butyrate, which is the preferred fuel source for um, our colonocytes, the cells that, um, that line our colon. Uh, but additionally, it creates other short-chain fatty acids, such as acetate. Acetate can be fed into uh, beneficial species to create more butyrate. And, and, uh, and the other most commonly studied short-chain fatty acid is propionate, uh, which can play a role in regulating our blood sugar as well as other factors. So consuming fiber generally creates more of these short chain fatty acids, which have beneficial effects on our gut health, uh, helps attract more healthy microbes, but at the same time improves our health because we absorb some of these into circulation. Sorbitol, as mentioned, gives prunes uh, and raisins their poo punch. That's what kind of what helps us go to the bathroom and relieves constipation by pulling st uh, water into the stool and keeping it absorbed so it's more gel-like as opposed to, you know, the rough ragged edges uh, that it goes in as. And so for more on fiber, we actually have a video covering a uh, high fiber diet, how to improve the fiber in your diet, a whole list of high fiber fruits, vegetables, um, nuts, and, and grains. Click the eye icon in the upper right hand corner Corner to kind of go over to that video and see some high fiber fruits. We're going to discuss some high polyphenol fruits uh, a little later in this presentation. Now, in addition to having beneficial effects on our gut when these polyphenols get absorbed into the intestinal cells and kind of upregulate these detoxification pathways, decrease inflammation, yada, 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 the uh, polyphenols also have direct effects on microbes within the gut. So we'll just kind of brush over that a little bit. Um, they interfere with bacterial quorum sensing, which means uh, quorum sensing is how bacteria communicate with one another. So the idea is that these polyphenols can interfere with this and prevent uh, pathogenic bacteria contained uh, within biofilms within the gut from overgrowing and becoming problems. Uh, additionally, uh, polyphenols can sensitize bacteria to xenobiotics. Xenobiotics are exactly what we mentioned before. Polyphenols are xenobiotics, but you can also use polyphenols to sensitize bacteria to uh, a different xenobiotic, say an antimicrobial, to help kind of kill off pathogenic bacteria. Um, but dietary polyphenols also generate hydrogen peroxide, which alter membrane permeability and can kind of damage um, bacteria within the gut. That's effectively uh, one of our defense mechanisms is to create hydrogen peroxide to kind of help uh, destroy bacteria and uh, polyphenols can help do that. They modulate the microbiota composition as as acting as prebiotics, uh, they will increase the proliferation of healthy bacteria that make healthy metabolites, but at the same time, uh, they can suppress pathogenic bacteria, both due to an a direct antimicrobial effect, as well as shaping the intestinal environment to be healthy, not inflammatory, prevent intestinal permeability, et cetera, et cetera. They also impact our gut metabolism and immunity. For example, when we create more short chain fatty acids, that kind of uh, causes us to suck up a lot of the oxygen that's in the gut. Uh, we want the gut to be mostly anaerobic. That 
kind of shapes the microbiome to be what we want. We don't want too much oxygen in there. So what happens is, is when our cells kind of take in, uh, butyrate the short chain fatty acid, additionally, it sucks all the oxygen out of the, the intestinal lumen and allows that area to be more anaerobic to promote the growth of beneficial bacteria. Um, it also changes, um, you know, the preferred substrates within the gut as mentioned. Butyrate is a preferred substrate. So if you're creating more of that, that's going to enhance gut metabolism, increase um, uh, energy derived from the gut. So our cells have what they need and additionally kind of regulate immunity in a way that kind of tamps down on inflammation and um, uh, prevents leaky gut. And those anti-inflammatory properties are very, very important because when you create inflammation in the gut, you actually increase oxygen in the gut. That makes it more, um, more preferable um, for um, aerobic bacteria to grow there, and it just increases the risk of pathogens invading. So uh, polyphenols impact the gut microbiome, the microbes that are there, as well as how the gut functions in a very robust way. So consuming more polyphenols in your diet um, can be very beneficial and fruit are just one of many polyphenol containing foods uh, which would include coffee and tea cereal grains dark chocolate vegetables nuts uh, seeds wine and things of that nature so it's actually kind of a really cool story how polyphenols affect our gut environment and make it healthy so polyphenols are seen as foreign by us so what happens is um, for the most part, they're not super absorbable anyway, but the ones we do absorb into our intestinal cells, see them as foreign. Some of them do get by and slip into circulation where they can go to the liver and do the same thing, upright detoxif upregulate detoxification pathways. But the ones that get spit, spit back into the gut uh, what's happening is you're turning on these detoxification pathways and what happens when we're trying to detox something that we see as foreign, we believe it's a bad idea to let this to get into our circulation. So what happens is when we regulate, upregulate these detoxification pathways, these xenobiotics or foreign molecules hit these nuclear receptors that increase our detoxification pathways. When they do this, we get two major things. Inflammation is suppressed and barrier strength is upregulated because what's the point in spitting them back into the gut lumen if they're just going to you know kind of seep back in through a leaky gut so upregulating these detox pathways increases uh, intestin intestinal strength it prevents leaky gut it decreases inflammation and we absorb around 5 to 10% of these polyphenols some of them get in can go to the liver and they will do very similar things there they'll upregulate detoxification pathways will effectively urinate them out eventually because they're um, the whole point in those detox pathways is to make them water soluble so we can pee or poo them out um, the remaining 90 to 95 percent of polyphenols are going to make it into the colon where they will be available um, to the microbes there. They can alter microbial function. They can cause your beneficial microbes to create more healthy metabolites. They can inhibit the creation of negative metabolites um, from pathogenic bacteria. There's also evidence that they can bind certain things uh, that can be toxic to the gut. And additionally, they can directly kill pathogenic bacteria due to their antimicrobial functions. So now that you have an idea of how uh, fruit is healthy, both through the soluble fiber content, uh, the polyphenol content, and the sorbitol content, um, how do we pick fruit? to kind of get the most bang for our buck. Well, clearly you don't want just fruit that are high in fiber and you don't want just fruit that are kind of high in polyphenol content. You want both. So how do you know uh, what fruits are high in polyphenols? Well, the colors are largely dictated by the polyphenols. So a bright, colorful fruit is going to have more polyphenols than that same fruit that's not quite as colorful. So um, the to get the whole benefit from fruit, it's really important to have high polyphenol content as well. Um, interesting to point out that a lot of the times the polyphenol content is wrapped up in the peel. Uh, that's because, you know, fruit are exposed to ultraviolet light. So a lot of the times those, um, those pigments in the, in the fruit peel are there uh, acting as stress response pathways to prevent UV damage to the fruit. So you want to eat the peel. You don't want to peel an apple and uh, throw away the peel. So you really want to uh, kind of look at some foods, especially things like apples um, that have like a 
colorful peel but a very kind of dull inside and you absolutely want to eat the peel that's where all the fiber and all of the polyphenols are the stringy fibrous stuff in fruit is the fiber so you also want to eat that um, you may recognize like the orange pith you know when you peel an orange and there's kind of that white stringy stuff that's fiber you don't want to throw that away there is actually a lot of beneficial things in that um, there are some polyphenols as well because um, you know they're not clearly just white so you want to just kind of leave some of the pith on uh, additionally uh, bananas you know how they have the stringy things so things of that nature the the stringy kind of more fiber stuff is the fiber so you don't want to just rip all of that off the fruit you want to have some of that on the fruit as well On top of that, the seeds are packed with prebiotics. It's very indigestible. If you think about it, you know, a lot of people kind of say like, you know, fruit want to be eaten. I don't think you really say that. They don't really want to be eaten. But the fact that they're around is because their seeds are relatively indigestible and we poo them out. We're effectively kind of uh, planting those seeds uh, in our feces. So some of those are going to make it through. Some of those are not. So you don't want to remove the seeds or, or get fruit that have no seeds certainly something like oranges where we don't really eat the seeds um, you can kind of go with seedless but things like grapes um, grapes raisins things like that you want to have the small seeds in there because they're going to go through you and they're going to have a prebiotic effect um, in fact raisins you actually double the fiber content by going with seeded raisins versus seedless raisins the recommended intake for prebiotic effects of um, polyphenols is two servings of fruit with at least two and a half grams of fiber as well. So to get the full pro prebiotic effect, you want very colorful fruit. Um, you want to include things like the pith and the fibrous things. Uh, if the, the fruit has seeds, you kind of want to keep those. Um, and you want the fruit to have at least two and a half grams of fiber and you want to be very colorful so you're getting all of these beneficial effects uh, from the polyphenols the fiber and even the sorbitol probably has some prebiotic effects as well there are not a ton of human studies looking at fruit consumption and improvements in gut health there are a ton of rodent studies mouse and rat studies looking at this the problem is the biotransformation pathways in humans are completely different uh, than mice and rats so your polyphenols are a really hard thing to study and use to compare between species that's why it's important to kind of look at how they affect us humans specifically so we do have a few studies the first one found that in, uh, increasing blueberry intake uh, increases keystone species in the gut keystone species are microbes that have an oversized effect on the gut environment decreasing inflammation preventing leaky gut um, promoting motility and they create metabolites that attract other beneficial bacteria as well so they're kind of like the cool guy at the party blueberry intake increased um, two specific members phacobacterium bacterium prausnitzi and ruminococcus bromide these are really big well-studied uh, keystone species so it's a Important to have them and blueberries overall are one of the kind of pack one of the most powerful uh, punches in terms of improving gut health due to their high fiber content high polyphenol content the specific polyphenols proanthocyanins that are in there as well as they have seeds that you probably don't even perceive while you're eating uh, but they do so we get a good prebiotic effect and good overall effect as well raisins have a beneficial effect as well on those both those same keystone species phacobacterium prausnitzi and ruminococcus bromide they also suppress some pathogenic bacteria um, opportunistic pathogens so raisins are another thing that you can include in your diet Pomegranates, uh, they found that increasing pomegranate consumption increased another keystone species, Acromancia uh, mucinophila. And this happened because Acromancia kind of converts some of the polyphenols and pomegranates to something called urolithin A, which is really incredibly beneficial to our gut health and is actually being studied as an anti-aging molecule. So that's something to look out for. And that's in pomegranates. Uh, pomegranate juice will have a higher content, higher concentration of the polyphenols due to its bright color. The problem is you're removing the fiber from the seeds, so you're not getting all of the benefits. So overall, um, pomegranates are going to be beneficial. Um, and interestingly enough, they really upregulate the detoxification pathways. You've probably heard that there are certain medications that you can't take when you consume grapefruit juice. That's because grapefruit juice increases these detoxification pathways. Medicines are also 
also seen as xenobiotics. So things like pomegranate and grapefruit upregulate these pathways so much that they alter drug metabolism in a way that would either tell you to not consume these fruits if you're taking specific medicines or that it will in um, it, that you need to increase dosages if this is something that's commonly a part of your diet. So as always, you know whether you're talking about just increasing increasing fruits in your diets, talk to your doctor about how this may affect anything you are taking. Citrus fruits, uh, particularly oranges and grapefruit, have also been shown to have beneficial effects on the microbiome. They, in general, increase lactobacillus species, bifidobacteria species, acromantia species, and ruminococcus species. And again, there are keystone members uh, in at least the last three, and uh, lactobacillus are so common and so beneficial that there's probably a, a host of lactobacillus that are also keystone species as well. Green bananas, uh, they found reduced diarrhea, and it did this. The, um, there's pectin in these bananas. Um, a lot of this is probably going to be involved in both the resistant starch as well as the sorbitol content of green bananas, absorbing a lot of the fluid you might take in uh, that would create diarrhea. So green bananas or green banana flour uh, have been shown to have an overall beneficial effect on diarrhea, particularly induced by pathogenic bacteria. And finally, this is not in human study. Uh, this is actually just kind of looking at how certain polyphenols affect the gut environment. And this is super interesting uh, because um, hydrogen sulfide is actually something that it seems to be really important for gut health and might induce diarrhea. Um, so what they found was proanthocyanidins, which are found in most of the, you know, the reds, the blues, and, and the purples, you know, cyan, um, may bind problematic bacteria in the gut, specifically to the bacteria bacteria, but also their metabolites. Uh, so for example, hydrogen sulfide is relatively beneficial to us at low doses, but if the microbiome is pumping out a ton of hydrogen sulfide, that can actually kind of choke off the uh, cells in the colon because um, we have to detoxify the hydrogen sulfide, which prevents us from metabolize, metabolizing the butyrate. And what happens is this can increase the oxygen in the gut. We do not want that. So pro Proanthocyanidins can bind hydrogen sulfide and kind of help us shove it out the gut. Uh, this was found in a couple of studies. Effectively, a high protein diet is how we get more hydrogen sulfide in the colon. So if you're also consuming these reds, these purples, and uh, these green uh, blues in our uh, in our fruit, this can actually bind the excess hydrogen sulfide, so it just goes right out and does not impair metabolism within the gut. Also, p cresol is another kind of uh, another kind of metabolism that can become pathogenic to the, the intestinal cells. So we want to kind of tamp down on that. That's another, um, that's another kind of metabolite created by a high protein diet. The proanthocyanidins kind of inhibit its negative effect on our gut as well. So the, these proanthocyanidins are primarily found in blueberries, grapes, cranberries, uh, hazelnuts, which, you know, are not a fruit, um, but generally you're going to see them in the red, purples, and the blues. Now, in closing, let's just kind of talk about the super high polyphenol fruit. Uh, we're going to go by milligrams per 100 gram serving. So choke berries are by far the, the highest at 1,756 milligrams. Elderberries just under them at 1,359 milligrams. Blueberries range from around 535 milligrams to 836 milligrams. Black currant around 758 milligrams. Raisins are 477 to 799 milligrams. Just important to point out that it's the golden raisins that are the higher polyphenol content. Doesn't really make much sense because, you know, the purple raisins, the standard Thompson's raisins have more color, uh, but apparently the, the polyphenols in the golden raisins are actually higher. Plums have 377 milligrams of polyphenols. Blackberries, 260 milligrams of polyphenols. Strawberries, 235 milligrams. Raspberries, 215 milligrams. Prunes, 194 milligrams. Black grapes, 169 milligrams. And apples at 135 milligrams. So it's important to point out that you don't just need to be like, oh, now I'm just going to kind of mainline choke berries. You want to get a a wide assortment of fruit for the different polyphenols. So a, a green fruit is going to have a different kind of polyphenol profile than a blue fruit will, than a red fruit, and so on and so on. So you really want to mix them up. But Putting some of these very high polyphenol content fruits, particularly the ones that are also high in fiber, is probably your best bet to kind of up the beneficial effects of the fruit in your diet. 
So selecting fruit for gut health is actually pretty easy. Uh, you want to eat high polyphenol fruit daily. Blueberries are great for this in terms of something that's you know relatively available and something people eat a lot of. Eat high fiber fruit daily. Again, blueberries are great for that. Raspberries, anything with kind of a seed uh, is also going to have a relatively high fiber content. You want to stack high fiber with high polyphenol content. So you might make um, you might make something with uh, with a berry blend. So you'll have raspberries, blackberries, which are high in polyphenols and fiber, as well as blueberries, which are moderate it to high in fiber um, that way you kind of get both uh, the prebiotic and antimicrobial effects of all of these uh, compounds found within fruit don't strip your fruit of fiber in other words if it's something that you would normally eat a peel on such as an apple eat the peel um, I know a lot of people it, you know the, the peel is kind of fibrous which is why it contains fiber why its colors are uh, the polyphenol so don't peel it um, if there's pith like in an orange kind of consume some of the the pith and in general if there is a seedless variety of a fruit that you eat the seeds of the seeded version is going to be better so for example raisins um, a lot of um, uh, prunes and such are going to have the seeds in there those pack a very powerful prebiotic punch and they have overall beneficial effects on our gut health um, grapes as well grape seed extract has some really powerful effects which are, you're not going to recapitulate uh, by eating eating seeded grapes uh, but you will get a, a minor effect from that so eating that over in uh, a prolonged period of time could have beneficial effects on the gut as well Thank you very much for listening into this video. We tried to keep it simple. Um, we could add more if, if that's something you would like. If you want to know specifically about different types of um, polyphenols or if you want us to kind of elaborate more on this topic, please let us know. If you have any questions, comments, or critical uh, criticisms that are constructive, please put them in the comment section. If you like this uh, and you want to see more of it, please hit the subscribe and ring the bell so you get our updates. Also, if you liked this and you feel it would benefit some uh, of your friends and family, please share and like on social media so that we could get it out there and people can start doing the things that are better for their gut. Thank you very much for listening in and take care.